Hi, this is a quick tutorial to show you how I do my printing workflow. Now, I've opened up an image that purposefully has some pretty bright saturated colors to show you uh, very clearly what can happen and what things you need to look out for. Now, uh, a couple of things. First of all, you can see down here, I've got this in the Profoto RGB color space. Now, this is a pretty wide color space, and um, I used it purposefully for this because the wider the color space, the more likely you are to have issues with autogamic colors when you go to print. Now, I'm in Photoshop CS6, but the same basic things are going to apply for any of the versions, uh, any of the recent versions at least. Now, uh, a couple things. I've been talking for a couple weeks now about soft proofing, and there's a couple ways to do it. First of all, if you go under View, you can do Proof Setup, and then you can do Custom. By doing this, you can choose any paper printer profile that you have on your computer. Now, one of the papers that I like to use is um, the Enhanced Luster paper. And so we're going to scroll down Premium Luster. Um, 260 is a heavyweight one. Now, I'm going to move this out of the way. And um, rendering tent, you're only really going to use. So for the purpose of photography, really you only ever want to use relative colorimetric or uh, perceptual. Now Lightroom only has those two options. Here you can see that you also have saturation absolute colorimetric here as an option. The reason that you would use perceptual is when you have a color, uh, if you have a col colors that don't fit into the, the paper's color gamut, it's going to modify the relationships between these colors to make everything fit. So if you know this shade of green doesn't fit but this shade of green does fit, it's going to change the way that this one relates to this one and, and usually it'll make a very pleasing sort of overall image. Relative color metric on the other hand will only change the out of gamut colors. Everything else is going to stay the same. So uh, which one to use? You know, usually perceptual is going to give you a good option, um, but there's no absolutes, and one might give you a better result than the other. The other thing you can try is with the black point compensation, either on or off. With it on, usually you'll get better shadow detail, and um, you know, there's just really no knowing until you, you try it. For sure, you want to have your preview button on. Now here I've got the premium luster, it's got a relatively wide color space on this printer. And if you turn it on, look at the greens down here, you can see how it changes. And sorry for the little banging around, that's my dog getting exciting, it's, it's nearly time for her meal. Um, so having it on, you can see there's a bit of a color shift. Looking at the perceptual, on and off, you can see there's even more of a color shift. So for this particular one, I'm going to say relative color metrics better option. And then look at the black point compensation and you can see that there's not a huge difference having it on. I get a little bit less, a little bit brighter up here in this region here. And um, knowing my printer, I know that this is certainly within the, the realm of uh, printable. So I'm going to leave it off. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on. And now you can see that we have this check soft uh, proof colors on. So turn it off, you can see how it looks normally. Turn it on, you can see how that looks. The other thing that you might consider is gamut warning. And you can see it makes a big overlay of the gray. And this is going to reflect the, um, the color gamut that we just set up here in the proof, and it's custom. So having it on, there's a couple things that you might do. And first of all, um, uh, you might want, you're gonna wanna flatten your image. So save your, your photograph, is your master file before you actually go ahead and, and go to a printing output. So I've already done that, this is a copy. Um, looking up here, well looking down here, you can still see it says Profoto RGB 16 bit. Um, looking up here, you can see that it's got the Epson Stylus Pro Premium Luster Photo Paper listed, and that's showing you that we are soft proofing right now. Um, so what we're gonna do first is flatten the image. So if you go to this little pull down, you can do flatten image. 
give it a moment to do its thing. Now you want to do that because you are making changes that are best done to a flattened image. If you don't do it to a flattened image, then you might get some unpredictable results. Now that's kind of theoretical. I don't know if I really believe that there's a huge difference there, but um, you know, take it for, for uh, what it's worth. That's the recommendation. Now, a couple of ones that I suggest. Uh, first, it might just be that by reducing the saturation of those colors, you can bring those back in. So the first thing to do is I, I bring in an, a saturation layer and bring it back. And now you can see how all of that gray is gone. So that's definitely going to be on the right track. Now, do you want to do it to the whole image? Probably not. And let's see, let's get it back to just to where we have it. Um, you can do a couple things. First of all, you can select by color range to, to make your layer mask reflect that. Or you can just keep with a white layer mask and then paint it in. So that's that's probably the easiest result here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and accept that. I'm going to uh, go with a black brush on the brush. We're going to go with a relatively medium opacity and flow. And we're just going to paint in the effects. Now actually, there, there's more area that doesn't need it that, than does. So first I'm going to invert this. So that's Control I, and that's going to make it black. If you're on a, a Mac, then it's Command I. So now instead of painting with black, we're going to paint with white. And the thing is, with when you have the gamut, um, excuse me, when you have the the uh, gamut warning on, it's really easy. You just paint until it goes away. Make sure that you have your layer mask selected, paint, and um, this is the way I would recommend doing this kind of edit. When you have the little layer mask on, it just doesn't get any easier than that. So you can see it goes pretty straightforward. Uh, again, I'm using a Wacom tablet with a pen, and if you don't have a tablet by now, I would really recommend that you get one. It saves a lot of time. It's much easier to use because you know we've been using this basic shape device since we were you know before kindergarten, really, whenever we learned to hold our first crayon. And so it's just it's a very natural sort of motion. The other thing that's nice about the Wacom tablet is that it's pressure sensitive. So the harder I press the more effect I'm going to get. So I'm going to pause this while I finish this up here and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so I'm almost done here. And uh, in case you're wondering, this is a picture of graffiti on a train car. Now, you know, it might not be that important for me to make sure that the colors are all within the gamut here uh, for a, a photograph like this. But where you, you're really going to want to have it in gamut is, you know, let's say you have an animal and you have a fur color. Now, if you don't put it into the gamut, or um, probably more likely for most of you, a hair color. A nice auburn color hair, actually kind of hard to, to reproduce in print. And if you don't get your colors into the gamut, into fitting what you are, um, your printer and paper can handle, what's going to happen is that you're going to lose detail and you're going to go from having nice texture and seeing nice detail on you know the, the strands of the hair and it's just going to look like a big brown clump and that's not going to make your clients very happy so it's really important that you do what you can to get your your image into the color gamut of your print so i'm going to say this is good enough for now and um, again we're, i'm going to go ahead and turn off the the proof colors so now we can see how uh, there's still a little bit of a shift there's always going to be certain compromises you make when you make a print because the color space that you work in is always going to be bigger than the color space that you're printing in when you're doing the soft proofing the key is to make sure that those are acceptable changes so assuming that we're all good here what I would usually do next is do um, save this as a print file so now we're doing save as and here I'm going to call it uh, print. So now I know that it's going to be into the. Uh, oh, sorry, I had a little bit of a server error. So now I know that this is going to be in the um, profile that, that is going to uh, work for the print. 
So we're almost done saving here. I'm going to pause it while it finishes up. The next step is um, under edit, do convert to profile. So we were soft proofing. We were actually still working in the pro photo, but we were looking at how that would look on the premium luster. Now that we've decided this is an acceptable um, presentation here, we're going to go ahead and uh, actually change it to the profile we want. Now that's going to flatten the image automatically by default. There's a checkbox you can you can indicate if you don't want that. We're going to do file and we're going to do print. Now CS6 has changed the look of the print dialog box a bit, but the basics are the same for all of your version, recent versions at least. You're always going to have a nice big window to look in. Um, you're always going to have a printer set up so you, where you choose the printer you want. Um, under print settings, click on that, and you get the, the operating systems um, printer settings. Now a couple of things. Uh, for this particular printer, we want to make sure that the color is turned off, so it's right e very easy to do here under custom, and then you can go ahead and turn off the image color management. So that's good. Um, at this point, if I was printing on a sheet of paper, I would change it to sheet. We're, we're just going to make sure, uh, say this is for 8.5 by 11, so that's all good. Um, it doesn't matter what your paper settings here because we're going to have Photoshop manage the colors. Um, you can see I've got it on print manager's colors, so I need to change that. Now, printer profile, you need to make sure that you've got the right one selected. Even though it's already in the, the right profile, it's always a good idea to make sure um, that you have it selected right here. You don't want to have any kind of surprise. Um, it's going to tell you about the color management. That's fine. We have it turned off because Photoshop is doing it. And uh, normal printing, that's good. Again, relative color metric, use the same setting here that you did for converting it. That's all good. We're going to do scale to fit media, and um, we actually are going to want to change this to um, landscape orientation. So we're going to go up here, click on landscape button. And it's all going to fit. In Photoshop CS6, you see where the margins are. That's new for CS6. Uh, you're, you're still going to have the image placed more or less like it would be. Um, it's just now you can see a little graphic representation of that. Once that's all done, go ahead and press print and see what the results are. You can also include match print color here. Now, you can see that there's a little bit of shift. There, there really shouldn't be any shift at this point if you would set up your, um, if you convert to profile before you get to this part. Um, you can always put it in there if you want. If you're not doing the soft proofing, for sure put the gamut warning. Um, showing the paper white can give you an idea how that looks too. These are not going to change the way the print comes out. It's just going to change the way that they look in the window. So that's my setup. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, the big thing is in the printer settings for the operating system, that's going to be different no matter, uh, or depending on which kind of printer you use and certainly which printer manufacturer. So that's going to be the key thing that, that's different. But uh, we have been working the last two weeks to, to make sure that you've got the right settings. If you want to have printer manage the colors, that's certainly fine at this point. Uh, but then you need to enable the printer's color management, and then you would have it on um, ICM. So let me know if you have any questions, and I look forward to seeing your week three print soon.